again, Mr. Marcus Elliott. So Marcus, why don't you take it away? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Scott. And uh, I really appreciate you all having me here um, to talk about something that uh, I love to do and uh, has brought a lot of joy into my life, which is, which is writing music. Um, before we, before I dive into my process, uh, I, I, I want to just kind of take a little bit of time to just talk about uh, why composition is so important to me. I started, I started, I got a, one of those little mini uh, Casio keyboards when I was about four years old. And uh, that, that little, it was, you know, I would consider it, I think my parents considered it a toy at the time, but that toy completely changed my life because it gave me a, it, sh it just showed me this entire new world of, of possibilities and creativity. And um, I just remember sitting down and, and playing with it and all of the different sounds that I could get from it. And just, I would spend what felt, I don't know if it was hours, but what felt like hours just just putting these different sounds together and, you know, hearing something on, on a commercial or something like that and trying to, trying to play it back. And it was just, uh, it was my first introduction to this idea of, of writing music um, and expressing myself through music. Um, and as I got older, I found out like, you know, it was a place for me to really deal with problems that I was coming up with uh, as a kid, you know, um, and as just like, uh, as I was going through school, you know, if I was dealing with some sort of bullying or something like that, or some sort of just problems at home or whatever, uh, this space was always there for me to, to not only express myself, but to, to heal a lot of, a lot of different parts of myself. And I didn't even realize that's what was going on, but looking back, I can now see that. So, um, I, the reason why I tell that uh, the reason why I tell that is because uh, I, I still, uh, when I go to write music, I still try to write from that place of really being thankful for the fact that I get a, an opportunity and a chance to do it. And to me, I think that is first and foremost, whether we're playing our instrument <clears throat> or whether we're writing music or whatever it is we're doing with music, we really need to start from really thinking about just how much of a blessing it is that we get a chance to do it and that we get to have it in our lives, uh, especially in the world we live in today. Like, it's just, it's just not a given. It's not a given to have a life of music or to even have the chance to sit down and, and write something. So, um, so I just want to, I, I just want to make that clear. Like whenever I would, I, I guess the first first lesson of the master class when you're right when you're going to sit down to write something before you just dive in and start getting to work make sure you take the time to really appreciate what it is that you're doing um, because it's not only it's not only a practice for yourself it's it's really a gift that you're giving to uh, 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 anyone that's listening to whatever it is that you're writing so uh, it really and it, and, it, and it truly is a gift you know I can't tell you how many people um, and uh, you know, the other musicians on here, I'm sure you've had these experiences. I can't tell you how many people have uh, come up to me after I've written something and said, man, that song was just what I needed. Like that was the medicine I needed. I just, I just went through uh, list, whatever, you know, crazy thing I went through. I just went through a divorce or I just, you know, lost a good friend of mine and I heard this song and it was just what I needed. And, and you didn't even think about, you know, you weren't writing it for that reason, but it was, it was just the right thing for them. So that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're dealing with when we're writing music. We're really creating something very special, not, for, not just for ourselves, but for other people. So it's really important to remember that and to, and to be thankful for the fact that we get a chance to do that, okay? Um, so cool, we're gonna keep on moving here. So. Let's, uh, I, have a, I have a question for you all and you can just raise your virtual hands. Um, what is it that makes you, like, what is it that makes you a composer? 
how do you how do you become a composer don't make me start choosing people because i'll do it houston how do you how do you how do you become a composer um i think uh i say improvising is when i first started to become a composer because it's like when you're on the spot you're composing at that moment and then you can take it a step further by writing it down and putting stuff in writing but i think improvising is like a good first step okay okay i like that answer uh jeffrey what 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 you got no i think it's just when you start to feel the need for hearing certain things that you can't hear elsewhere or that you've like want to build on other things that you haven't heard or that you're just kind of yearning to hear that you just can't get fully out of something else uh for sure. Um, Johnny. Hey, everyone. Yeah, I would agree. For one, you know, with Houston, definitely improvising. You know, for me, all of my music comes from improvisation. I don't write with notation. Mm. Um, but before that, even if it's just having the, the idea, having a reoccurring musical ideas pop into your head, and wanting to express it in some way. No doubt. Let's get one more. Let's get one more person. Uh, Forrester, am I saying your name right? Yes, hi. Okay, cool, hey. Uh, I, I guess um, for me, I, I definitely agree with um, that, that improvisation is, is composing, um, but I guess from a more um, like, like traditional definition, I might say um, writing music and actually putting it down on manuscript paper or in some sort of notation software. Um, okay. Very good. Uh, all of those, all of those answers are definitely uh, uh, correct. And I, I think the simple answer is to become a composer, you have to compose. It's as simple as that. If we, I think that we have, I know for, for myself um, coming up, it was like the word composer was a very like lofty thing for me. It was like, oh, to be a composer, you must, you know, have all of this knowledge and you must understand how to write music down in, in very specific ways and you have to be able to do all these things. And it's just not the case. Um, composing is just getting, you have music in your head and you're, and you're documenting it in some way. Okay, that's, that's, really, that's really what composing, that's my definition of it. Uh, writing music down, which is what I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna show you guys like just kind of how I do, how I do that. Um, writing music down um, is another thing that I feel like is, is lifted up in a very high and a lofty space in reality we write we, we write music down just so that we can document it uh when you think about all of the classical composers that we all uh read about and and admire uh they they were all improvisers uh if they had recording devices you best believe they would be recording all of their stuff but because that technology wasn't available, the technology that they did have was a pen, and, a, a pen and paper. So that's how they were documenting things. Along the way, we kind of, like I said, we put the, we put these things on pedestals and and we and we idolize them. Um, but in reality, it was just the tools that they had to document the music that they have. Okay. So first thing I just want to make clear is like, you are you are a composer if you have music and you have a way to get it out of your head and document it some way to share with others. That, that to me is the definition of a composer, okay? Um, so <clears throat> let's keep on moving here. Uh, so I'm just like, so what I, what I, what I wanna do during this masterclass is I'm just gonna show you guys my process. Um, and it's this is this is my personal process. It changes every time I write music. It's never the same. Um, and 
the truth is, is that you all should have your own process of writing music. It's a very, this is a very personal, personal practice that we're talking about developing, okay? So there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, I, I, uh, about just like the tools of, of, of writing down music and recording, I, I use tools uh, that, that work well for me, okay? So the tools that, that, that I use for myself to write is, once again, a recording device. I, I use my, my phone. I always, have, I always uh, have my voice memo app ready to go because who has been in the car or in a weird situation where you can't necessarily go write something down or, or, or put it in logic or put it in finale and you're just, you've got this melody in your head and you're like, uh, I can't, you know, I got so many voice memos of me just singing random stuff. Um, uh, and it's a, it's a great tool. It's a great way to capture ideas. So, um, I would highly suggest everybody just always have some sort of recording device handy to get your ideas down. Okay. Another thing, staff paper, very basic, nothing fancy here, staff paper and a pencil. Um, I like, I, I like the process of writing things. Hold on one second, guys, I'm trying to find my pencil. There it is. Um, I like the process of writing things out by hand uh, just because it allows me uh, to slow my thoughts down. Um, it doesn't, I'm not just like, uh, when, I, when I'm writing music on finale, uh, it's a little bit, you can get a lot of information in there fast and you can copy and paste and you can kind of lose the, the elements of the music. Uh, then the, once again, this is just my personal, personal opinion. Whereas when I actually take the time to write things down by hand, um, that makes a big, big difference for me. Okay. Um, so that's, that's something that I use. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm a finale user. Uh, there's a lot of different softwares out there that people use. Um, I would highly suggest using those. I also use Logic. Uh, uh, Logic is a, is a great, great tool to have to just record my ideas and get them down and to arrange them. Okay. Um, and yeah, the other thing that I would say, um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about this uh, during this class, just because it would be a masterclass all in itself, but having a good understanding of the piano is extremely important. And we have two great, great piano players here um, that I would highly suggest you reach out to if that's something that you uh, would like help help with. Um, but having a good understanding of 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 the piano or some sort of harmonic device uh, is a great tool. is a is a great great tool to have. Um, and then also just my instrument. So my saxophone. I, when I'm when I'm when I'm writing music, I always have my saxophone out uh, just because this is my main instrument. Um, so that's where a lot of these ideas come from. So so that's that's what I have, and all of these things, these tools are just here for me to capture my ideas, to get them from here and out into the real world. That's that's what all of these things are for. Okay, does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions at this point? Okay, cool. So let's talk about actually going to write, when we're going to write music. Uh, sometimes uh, I am inspired to write music, right? Sometimes I have I, an idea that comes to me and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna write this down. And I get a chance to go and write that down and, and, and do that. But that's only sometimes. Most of the time, uh, when, I'm, when I'm going to write music, it's just a blank screen and I'm just staring at a blank page and there's nothing there. And I'm not inspired, uh, but I always make sure that I go and write anyways. So one thing that I, uh, b before I dive into this, I wanna, I wanna say this as well. Uh, a few, maybe a few years ago, it was, it was a summer, uh, for about a summer, I made sure that I wrote something every single day. Um, 
And what I would do is I would put on a timer and I, it would just be a five minute timer. And I would either record something on my phone or I would write something down. And I did that every single day. I would highly, 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 highly suggest you all do that. Challenge yourselves to do that. Make it a, make it a 30 day challenge for yourself. Just, just give yourself five, just five minutes. If you have five minutes in the morning, evening or night, whatever, just put a timer on and make yourself go into to the place of creation. Um, uh, putting that timer on uh, really uh, makes you have to get to things very quick, right? Uh, it, it kind of push, pushes you past um, all of the, well, I don't know if I wanna do this. I don't know if I wanna do that. It's like, okay, I gotta get to it. I only have five minutes. Let me get these ideas down. So I would highly suggest you do that. Um, and that's actually something at the end of this, I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do that together. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna take the time to really uh, sit down and have everybody write something in a short period of time. Um, but before we do that, uh, let's talk about ways to, to generate ideas, or to, I, I like to say generate openings for, for composition. I'd like to, before I go into it, I'd like to hear what, what do you all do? When you sit down, let's say you have a song you, you, you need to write for, for a project. Um, what are some of the things you all do to get, get your ideas going? If you, if you don't have any ideas of what it is you wanna do, what are some, some of the things that you all do to get things going? Uh, Darren, is that Darren from uh, Barbados? Yes, for sure. Oh man, how you doing, bro? I'm good, man. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, man. It's really good yeah. to see you. Go ahead, go ahead. I sing. Um, I'm not a singer. I'm a guitarist, and I play some, have some knowledge on the keyboard and piano. But I, I just crank out my recording device and I sing. I sing anything <laughs> uh, for about three minutes. Most of it is complete garbage, but somewhere in there. <laughs> I find one or two things that, that really resonates with me. Um, I haven't been writing for a long time and I realize that I'm getting a bit older and, 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 you know, there's nothing documented. You understand? I, I so I'm really getting into that, that I really want that, you know, if tomorrow is my last day that someone could say, this is what Darren was into when he was, you know, 29 years old, 30 years old. So I just sing, I just sing. And then from there, I, 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 find out what key I was in, or maybe what half key I was in. Uh, <laughs> and then I, you know, and then I just try to piece together, follow the melody as, as close as possible. But that's what I do. I just, I just sing. Cool. Very good. Um, Elvin, what do you do? Um, I like to listen to um, great music um, by good musicians. And I like to just get inspiration from that. Like if yes. I'm sitting down and like writing a blues, I'll listen to like, you know, like 10 or 10 blues songs and uh, then just hear what they're doing and hear all the bends and the stuff like that. And I try and replicate that in my work. I love that. I love that. Very good. Uh, Aaron. Um, yeah. So when I don't have like, when I feel like I'm uninspired, <clears throat> I kind of go to my Spotify on repeat playlist and just like listen to the sounds that I have like inadvertently like been vibing to or like yeah. resonating. So like um, lately it's been a lot of soul music, a lot of neo soul, a lot of soul um, and some Maroon 5. <laughs> um, but like listening to the sounds and like reviewing what I've actually been resonating with will give me some inspiration of like will like kind of tune my ear into where I want to go. So Definitely. just, um, yeah, really listen to what I've been vibing with. And that usually fuels my process of, oh, I really like the baseline here. I really like what they did there. And this is why I really like this song so much. So maybe I'll start to write based off of or start to create out of um, that inspiration or that mode. I love it. I love it. Um, Jeffrey. Well, I'll just um, first think, think about what kind of uh, emotion I want to transmit with the music. And, and then I'll think about what, like what key I want to be in, like whether, like what mode and what key. Um, a lot of times I just kind of sit down at the, at my synthesizer and just kind of 
kind of like fiddle with it until a certain sound kind of transmits what I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, so also like long tones, I just kind of sit and play a long tone on saxophone and kind of wait for something to be born out of the long tone that, so yeah. Love it. What about you, Houston? What do you do? Um, I usually like to listen, but specifically to things that aren't saxophones since I play saxophone mainly. Um, if I'm if I'm stuck that way, that way there will definitely be new ideas because like just just harmonically, there's always a difference between like let's say saxophone and piano. It's like they're gonna always do different things. So right, listening specifically to other instruments. Okay, I love that. Yeah, these are all great, great, great ideas. Um, I actually have a list that. Andrew Bishop, do you all know who that is? Andrew Bishop, great uh, saxophonist and teacher at, at University of Michigan. Him and I sat down and put a list, and I can send you guys this list. I don't think he, I don't think he will mind. I'll ask him later. And if he does, then I'll just say I'm sorry because I sent it out to you all. But um, he made, me and him made a list of ideas uh, that I like to go to uh, that have really helped me out. So uh one of the strategies is like use a verbal phrase right so like a verbal phrase like i don't you know it could be uh the sunshine you know and i would take the sunshine and i would try and use the maybe the rhythm of the sunshine and 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 think about how i can turn that into some sort of musical idea um use arpeggios uh prominent use of of large leaps prominent use of single intervals uh, rest or space, a gesture, uh, write a choral type tune, use an effect or a character like bittersweet or comical or sad, uh, uh, use scale movement, use slow lines, fast lines. These are just ideas that we all just, we just kind of wrote down just to have ideas to start. But even before that, one thing that I want to bring up that everybody kind of mentioned is you all are listening you are listening to um, other music that inspires you. Um, that to me is huge. Uh, there's a quote, and I don't know who said it. It's like, good composers borrow, borrow great composers steal. And I 100% endorse stealing as much as you possibly can. And you're, I, I know that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Because, and here's why it's the truth. When you hear a piece of music that inspires you, it means that there's something in there that really resonates you and is, and is calling a certain part of you. So finding that thing and, and, and admiring that thing and taking it and morphing it into your own thing is to me, has, has been one of the most productive ways to create uh, uh, some amazing music. Uh, I wrote a, st a string quartet piece that uh, I was listening to. Uh, uh, I was listening to some of uh, Shostakovich's uh, 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 quartet, string quartet pieces. And I stole so much stuff, like little small melodies. And, and you know, once I stole them, I flipped them and I did things to it. You would never know um, when you're listening to it that that's what it is. But I just wanna, I, I wanna make that clear. Like, do not be afraid to just completely rip an idea and flip it and do your own thing to it. Like that to me is, is such a, it's such a great, great way to really start just getting, just staying inspired and getting into music. Okay. Um, so so make, make, make sure you guys are, are staying inspired and, and are constantly listening. Okay. Um, cool. Let's keep it moving here. Let's see. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you guys my process, how I go about, how I go about writing music. Um, and then after I'm done, I'm going to have, I'm going to have you all do it. I'm going to have you, you guys go through something and and create something, okay? Um, 
will we have access to this recording? Darren asks. Scott, is will they have access to this? Yes? Okay, cool. Very good, very good. <clears throat> um, before I move on, are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Okay, cool. Oops. Okay. So, like I said, one thing that really helps me out um, when, when I'm going to sit down and write music, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming because it's like, like I said, if you don't have any ideas, like right now, I have no ideas as to what it is I'm going to write. Uh, uh, if you don't have any ideas, if you don't have any sort of like things that are inspiring you, the one thing that I have found to be extremely, extremely effective for me is to put on a timer. Um, putting on a timer to allow myself to just create. Uh, it, I, I believe the reason why it works so well is because there's a, there's a start and an end time and it allow, it allows me to know that, you know, it just, it just puts a fire under my butt. I'll just put it like that. It puts a fire under my butt to really get some things out and to really uh, make something happen. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a timer on, I think for, let's see, it's 10 34. I'm going to put a timer on for 15 minutes, I think. And I'm going to try and write a song. And so uh, I may not take it all the way through to the finale section uh, to like take it through finale and all of that. I'm just going to try and get it out. I'm going to write it on this here staff paper and I'm going to, I got my piano over here. Can you guys hear that? So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go into creation mode um, and, and start writing. Uh, and I call it creation mode. The reason why I call it creation mode is because um, I'm not sure if you all see, uh, saw a video that I, I did earlier uh, on Facebook, but you cannot create and critique at the same time. Uh, uh, well, let me say that again. I cannot create and critique at the same time. Uh, I, I have found that when I try to uh, make music uh, and I'm also trying to nitpick and, and make and say, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, I should move this around. I never actually get through actually completing a song. Uh, so I like to set aside a certain amount of time and just go, okay? Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I have a performance coming up with uh, Noah Jackson and uh, a piano player. I think we're, we're, we'll probably be Ian Finkelstein uh, and I need to write music for that. So that's, that's what I'm gonna write for. Uh, I, the ensemble that I'm going to be writing for here is for saxophone, uh, for uh, uh, bass, and for uh, piano. Okay. So, cool. I'm going to get started. So, I'm going to put my timer on. If I can find it, where is it? There it is. I'm gonna put my timer on for 15 minutes. And what I'm gonna do first is I can, I'm just gonna tell you guys kind of how I think I'm gonna work through this. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start on my saxophone. I'm gonna start just playing some melodies uh, and get some ideas out. I'm also gonna be recording myself while I do this with my phone. So that way I can go back and listen to certain ideas just in case if I, if I forget it. Once I get to an idea that I like, I'm going to write it down on this piece of paper here. Once I get my melody completed, I'm going to move to my piano over here. I'm gonna find some chords that I like. Once again, I'm not gonna dive too deep into harmonic uh, uh, explanation just because that would be a masterclass in itself. But if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. And if we have time, I'll, I'll dive into it. Um, and I'm just gonna do it. And I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna try and get everything down on, on a piece of paper. Um, so yeah, here we go. Uh, let me get.
Give me one second, guys. Just grab an extra. Okay, cool. You all still there? You with me? Great. All right, here we go. Bam. So, like I said, I'm just going to start playing, playing around on my saxophone, see if I land on something I like. baseline that sounds like a baseline to me so i'm gonna i'm going to record that so that i have that down this is the baseline <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to move over here to the piano. Let's see what I got here. Great, great, great. I think that's an intro. I'm moving over here now to my notepad. And what I like to do in situations like this, I may not even write necessarily write down the rhythm. I might just write down the notes um, just so that I have that, have that taken care of. So there we go. I just wrote that down. It's documented. We have a we have our first idea documented. Okay. So I don't know that. Like I said, that sounds like an intro to me. I'm gonna find a new. I'm gonna find another section here to move into. Um, let's see. Oh. <laughs> first part of the melody ladies and gentlemen so da da ba, da 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 
da da da da bum 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 um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, can you uh, count it off and sing it again? I'm kind of having yeah. trouble feeling it. Oh, no problem. Yeah. So this is where I'm hearing it. One, two, three. Uh. Right. So that's that's where that's where I'm hearing that. One, two, three, four. Dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Melody. Yeah, there it is. So one, two, three. Okay. Cool. Maybe that repeats. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Repeat that section. And maybe the second time through, we'll change the rhythm up a little bit. So, I like that. Cool. I'm going to record that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then let's see. We're going to another. So, yeah. So right there, so another thing that's going on too right now is, and this is something that I would highly suggest you all practice is, and this is something you can practice. This is not just something that is a, is like a gift, but practicing, hearing all the, like hearing just different parts in your head as things are going on. So I'm hearing like, I'm hearing certain bass notes that are going on. I'm hearing like, uh, I'm hearing drums, even though this, this song won't have any drums on it. I'm hearing like drum patterns that are going on. And I'm just trying to capture down as much as I possibly can. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I like that. So, I'm gonna do this next section to kind of contrast this rhythmic part that I have. Then we're gonna go into like a more romantic kind of longer, long tones. Something like that. Let's write that down. So we got this for the melody for right now.
ba 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 da yeah ba da da So this is what we got. So, so right now what I'm doing is like, okay, I've made the decision that I just want to focus on this melody. I'm going to get this melody down first. Okay. And then what I'm going to do later is kind of come back and fill things out. Okay. So this is what we have right now for the melody. <laughs> This is what we got right now. section ladies and gentlemen okay so what i like to do in situations like this okay let's see where am i at with time okay cool i got a minute and 46 seconds left so what i what i what i like to do now is i like to think about what's the next section here i like to think about con contrasting ideas right um and if that's even inside of this melody like i have this kind of do 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 kind of moving like that and then 
uh, I've, I wrote this idea where I've got this kind of romantic thing, you know, I'm a romantic, so there's always a little bit of romance in all my songs. So this is, in my head, I'm, it's very kind of major, uh, very positive. When we go into the bridge, it needs to be, there needs to be a shift. So maybe this is where the villain comes in. Maybe this is where uh, there's uh, some darkness there. Let's see. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's busy, right? It's the, the A sections are busy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it on this next section. There's going to be a lot of space. I'm going to make it, make it very spacious. So, so we got. because that's kind of a reference to the beginning of the of the thing. So we got So that's what we have up to that point. I'm going to stop here for right now, okay? Because I just want to uh, just check in here with you guys. So one thing that I just want to point out, and that's, this is what you guys just saw me do. There was very rarely did you see me ever have an idea and say, that's not good enough. 
right? Was there ever a moment there, like you kind of saw me maybe shifting through some things and moving things around, but once there was an idea that was established, I just went for it, right? And that's, that's the one thing that I really just wanted to show you all is like, don't throw out your ideas. You know, if there's something that locks in, let it lock in and keep on moving because as, as the, as things kind of go on, there's, there's, I'm a, I'm a believer that there's a real reason why those ideas even come to us in the first place, you know? So I don't throw them out. I don't, I don't treat them as, as, as not, as not good. Um, and as you can see, another thing that I do when I'm writing music is that there's a story we're telling the story, you know? So I have, a, I've, I've basically just allowed my mind to just kind of create the story in real time. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so now uh, in that, in that 15 minutes, that might've been more like 20 minutes, but in that, in that, in that period of time there, what I've done is I now have a melody. Uh, I have a very strong melody. I have a bass line that, that's a, that, that I'm going to deal with. Um, and I'm going to, uh, later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down at the piano. I'm going to put some chords and things like that and color it behind it. And I have a song, okay? The only reason, though, why I was able to even get this idea or this, this, this corn of an idea is because I sat down and I said, okay, 15 minutes, you got to knock this out. Let's do it. Bam. And the more you practice doing that, the better we all are going to get at doing that, okay? Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, after seeing what they just saw? Are there any questions? I had a question for you. With the with the 15 minute time frame, do you find um, having that, that kind of time against you, um, does that work to your advantage of still creating something that's organic and honest when you're creating or do you find it something that just um, forces you to, to produce something aesthetically pleasing to the ears in that within that time frame? I would say it, it, it forces me to really get to the, get to it. Um, I don't gotcha. have, I don't have the luxury of thinking about what, what may sound good to other people when I have that gotcha. time gotcha. on me, you know what I'm saying? It really, sure. it, it makes me be like, okay, it's just, what's the idea? That's the idea. Okay. Let's get it down. You know what I'm saying? Um, For sure. and, and, and the, the, the beautiful thing, the, the, the beautiful thing about this is that, um, uh, when I, when I do this, when you create it, once you're done creating it, you can always go back and change it if you want to. You can always go back and move things around and make it the thing that you want to do, which is probably something I will do with this, you know, once I go into the editing thing. But you can't edit anything if you don't have anything down. So you have to get the ideas out, okay? Getting those ideas out and getting, the, getting just a theme going, some sort of idea, that's the most important thing. Um, what did Darren say? He would want to see the process of. <laughs> okay, I can do that. Um, I can do that. Uh, however, one thing that I would be really interested in doing <clears throat> is I want to I want to challenge everybody on here uh, uh, to to create something. Okay. This is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna make it very, very simple. Uh, if you don't play an instrument, we all have a voice. So that's, that's, that is the original instrument. Um, we all have a voice. I want you all to give yourself five minutes. You have five minutes to create a melody. Okay, you have five minutes to create a melody. And what you can do if, if, if your way of documenting is just recording, that's totally fine. Record it. If your way of documenting is writing it down, that's totally fine. Write it down. But you have five minutes to, to make that happen, okay? Uh, is everyone up for the challenge? I need to see thumbs up. I need to see, I need to see that everybody's down. Jeff, you down, bro? Come on, Jeff. Give us something. You can sing something. Sing something for us. I'm a... <laughs> I got you. I got you, Mike. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Not you, Jeffrey. I'm talking. Oh no, about no, Jeff. damn. Sorry. Jeff Dunn. <laughs> Jeff Dunn is uh, an amazing photographer. It does a lot of really great work, and I'm really happy to see him here. And I want to hear his music. Come on, man. You you here for a reason? 
Okay. All right. You guys ready? Is everybody ready? Okay. I would also ask if you could just put yourself on mute for the next five minutes while you're while you're getting these melodies down. Okay. Um, and I will keep the time. While you're doing that, I'm gonna keep working on my stuff. Okay. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, begin. We're at one minute and 30 seconds.
And there we are. Time is up. Time is up. How did that feel? Somebody share. Tell me, tell me how how did that go for you? Aaron, how did that go for you? Um, it felt really good actually to just get a melody down and then just stick with it and not to scrap it, but just to stay with it and just to be open to it and see what I can create out of it instead of like you said, like critiquing at the same time, like, oh, nobody's going to want to hear that or that's too major sounding or sounds too much like this. Um, But to actually just open myself up and accept whatever sounded good to my ear and uh, just go with it and be open to it and just allow it to flow without that critique, like stopping you, you know. For sure. Uh, It felt good. It actually felt good. Very good. Very good. Uh, Darren, uh, I see. I see your comments. Go. Go ahead. You said it was difficult for you. Can you? Can you elaborate? Yeah, it was difficult not to critique myself. Um, I just picked up the guitar. I started to play. You know, I had some prevailing ideas, but I really didn't like it. But to stick with it was 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 very difficult. So what I did was just stuck with uh, uh, stuck with it. But it was it was difficult to not critique because. Yeah, uh, you, you just muted yourself. I don't know if you, you still there, Darren? Oh, sorry. Oh, can yeah. you hear me again? Yeah, I can hear you now. So I was just saying it was very hard not to critique myself. I, yeah. I, that is something that I really have to practice doing because I've been doing it for so long. Isn't that interesting? And and uh, I think that one of the great things about this practice is that it kind of show it, that 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 critic really shows its head in situations like this. It's like, um, excuse me, but that sounds like crap. And you're like, whoa, what? I'm just writing music, you know? Yeah. It's like, where did, where did that come from, you know? Um, so I would also, the reason why I enjoy doing this is because it's an exercise for me to kind of find that voice and be like, okay, I know what that voice sounds like. I know, I know where that voice is coming from, and I'm going to choose to not allow it to dictate what it is I'm going to do, you know? I'm going to keep doing the thing that I'm doing. Uh, Max. I thought it was actually pretty surprising. Like, I didn't even know that I could come up with a melody and like, (laughs) you know, like so quickly within that amount of time. I I guess I never really like practiced it that way before. So uh, it really pushed me past like the criticism stage. Um, A lot of times that that usually just, um, you know, cold stop, like just prevents me from pushing any music out at all so it really helped a lot actually that's amazing that's amazing yeah it it really makes you get to it um the beautiful thing too that i like about doing these sort of things is like once you have an idea then it's like man you could expand like if i wanted to turn this into like an or like an orchestral piece i could totally there's nothing stopping me from doing that i have the idea the ideas are so rich and so fertile like just getting the idea out, it's like, man, the, after that, you can expand it, you can contract it, you can do whatever you want to it. You know, it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Um, who else had their hand up? Houston, what, how was it for you, man? Yeah, uh, I felt the same way as Max. I was just kind of shocked that I could come up with a, a melody in that short amount of time. Yeah. Um, since you said don't critique, then I was like, I was like, okay, I guess I won't critique any other situation. I would have, and it, I would have only had one note. <laughs> mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. this this time, this time it really it really helped. Yeah, Liam, what what, what you? Is, I'm seeing you. You're popping up in the comments. Tell tell me how was it for you? Uh, it was interesting because I'm. Can you hear me? All good. Yeah. Yep. All right. Because I'm very new to composition, so all I did was I read messages in chat. And kind of had the rhythm of them in my head and just nice and it was interesting that that just five minutes i just kept doing it over and over again eventually i got something that i really liked well that's very exciting man that is very very cool um let's see marvin how how did it go for you man oh marvin you're on mute right now marcus um uh, by using one of your techniques that you mentioned today about hearing other parts, I came up with this great melody and even some chords 
that I was hearing in the background. You know, that really helped, you know, to hear in other parts and the beats and the uh, different ideas and to use uh, some of the things that you mentioned today were great. Man, that's great. I'm happy to hear it. I'm happy to hear it. Um, I want to hear that song. I like that. I like that part. I want to hear that. So Still, we'll talk about stealing, though. Don't, don't yeah. steal. <laughs> I'm going to steal it. I'm stealing everybody's stuff. Don't get, This is why I did the master class, so I could take all of your stuff and steal it. That's believe that's why we are here. Uh, Shane, what, what? how was it for you? Um, I kind of got lucky. So, like, while you were talking, before we started, like, the five minutes, I had uh -huh. an idea. and I started. Oh, cool. That's great. Wanna, forget it. Um, that's great. And I just used, like, inspiration from other songs, like, like transitioning from chords and stuff. Because um, I transcribed, like, a lot of video game music. Okay. And that kind of helped. Um, so, like, it, it was just in my memory. But I, I, know, I notated it in a new score before. So. Okay. Very yeah. good. Very good. Um, Elvin, how was it for you? Um, I thought it was really good. Um, I, I would agree that um, someone put in the chat that the five minutes felt freeing. Yeah. And, it, and it sort of did because um, not only do you have the time limit, but you sort of have the limitation of time that's pushing all your ideas um, to greatness because... Yeah. You know, if you come up, it's it's not that easy to come up with an idea sometimes. Um, but it's much easier to critique that idea so that it's better in the same time frame. That's amazing. Um yeah, it's 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 really something it's really something interesting when we allow us ourselves to kind of get out of the way. Um I'm a big and I'm a I'm a big believer in I like to uh I like to think about uh when music is coming uh into my head instead of thinking about me coming up with something I think I like to think about me pulling down something as if there's something like there's music that's always happening because there is music always there's music always happening and I'm just pulling it down that's another thing that I feel like has really helped me out a lot in my in, in my compositional process it's just instead of thinking about I'm create like I'm creating and pulling something up it's like it's already going on because it is it's already happening and I'm just pulling it down and putting it on the paper so I would play with that you all as well um we have about 15 minutes left and I want to make sure that I leave some time open uh for if there are any questions, um, are there any are there any questions? Are there any comments? Questions, uh, Aaron. So earlier you were talking about the B section, right, and how you were it to like contrast or. Um, so my thing is one of my struggles is that I'll come up with the A section, like a melody and everything. Yeah. And I want to add a B section, but having a hard time trying to figure out. Um, a B section that kind of like that kind of also relates to the melody and isn't doesn't feel like an entirely different thing in and of itself. So do you have any um you have any tips for when you're creating the B section? Cause you were when you were yeah. doing, you were talking about the contrast between um how your melody was and how you wanted it to be more flowing. Like in the piece that I'm working on, um I like the melody that I came up with, but I want my B section to kind of be like more energetic or like hit or like kind of hype up the energy of the melody of the that's amazing even more so when well, you're talking about ideas do you have any tips on like coming up um or not coming up but expanding <laughs> you can say coming up that's fine <laughs> like <about> expanding <laughs> your song into the b section <laughs> or like yeah, yeah. the idea or building upon the idea yeah yeah well so the first thing is there's a there's a there's a thing that I like to call the inner artist. Uh, and that's kind of the place where I like to really just create from. One of the characteristics of the inner artist is curiosity. Okay, being curious. And, and we see this, if any of you all are around children, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about because they there is no filter for them. They're just, they're just doing their thing. They're 
extremely creative beings. They are so curious. Everything is like, I got to put that in my mouth. I got to, you know, I got to, I got to go touch that. I got to go see how this works, you know? Um, so what I would say to you is that instead of trying to figure out an answer, think of questions you can ask yourself. So if, let's say, like you just said, okay, so let's say your melody is really cool and stuff. Like what would be, what would be a way to, to contrast that, to make something for the B section fiery? And then I would go and explore that. I would go, so I would ask that question and then I would go and explore, explore how that would be, or what would it be? Uh, why, why not have a section? It's like, why not have a section that's completely different than the melody? Like, let's see how that sounds. So then you write a section that is completely different from the section. So to me, it's less about trying to find answers and more about just like coming from a place of like, just asking the right questions, especially when we're in a place of, of creation. It's all about asking questions. It's all about being curious and allowing yourself to be curious and not, and not you know, once again, not judging yourself for like going, to, going into different spaces and thinking of different melodies. Um, so, so Aaron, so for example, for yours, uh, how, how, what, what is it that, what is it that you want the B section to be like? Um, I want it to be more, um, like you said, a little bit more fiery, a little bit more spicy. Um, okay. My melody, melody kind of has a bit going on. So I want, I'm like, okay, I know I want space. So I'm exploring what type of space that sounds good to me or that feels good to me. Yeah. And I want it to be more like horn hits because I'm dealing with the alto and the baritone. So, Got you. Like you were saying, I kind of started that process of exploring the question, like, okay, I want space, exploring space that feels good to me and um, exploring the question or exploring possible um, possibilities to the question. And I'm asking myself, well, how do I want this to sound? So like, in like, again, listening to uh, melodies that I resonate with and trying to uh, kind of observe what they did and coming up with ideas like, oh, I like the way they did this. Let me try that. And awesome. So, so, yeah, it looks like I already kind of started the process. So. Yeah, it sounds like you have, it sounds like you already know what to do to me. Um, you know, just get the ideas out, get the ideas out. Just keep keep creating, get get all those ideas out and you'll, and you'll find something you like. Cool. Um, you. Yeah, of course. Are there any other questions? Scott. Yeah. So when, when you were creating your, your composition, which of the Andrew Bishop, Marcus Elliott um, inspirations did you choose from? That's a good question. I don't think I was actually even thinking of any of them. Um, I just kind of jumped in. Uh, that's, I use those when I'm like, really like, you know, one like one of the things that I was doing and, and, have been doing now with with this with this newborn is like when I'm up when I when I'm up super early and my brain doesn't work at all and I just need something to just be like okay here we go so I'll just choose something to be like just start with a major chord just start there just start with a major chord and work from there you know and so I'll play a major chord and then I'll just go from there um so that's that's usually those are more just like kicking the pants sort of times where 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 I'm really just like I can't I don't even want to think about music right now, but I want to make sure, you know, but I'm like, I, I am, a, I want to get this stuff out. That's, those are kind of what those are for. Okay. So, I, I was going to guess intervallic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's just a, that's always in there for me. <laughs> that's always in there, you know, thinking of like just different intervals. I love playing around with intervals. Um, and it's what I'm, it's actually like what I'm practicing right now too, which is also another thing, like incorporating the things that you're practicing into your compositions is also a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, Jeff, Jeffrey. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, I know it's like sometimes, I don't know, I'll just ask the question, <laughs> but like, <laughs> um, when you're, cause you kind of started with melody this time around. Um, but I know you said you kind of have stuff like already happening in your head and you just, you chose to take the melody out first. Um, but I feel like as a saxophonist, I always, or like a primarily as a saxophonist, I always go towards melody first. Um, but um, do you tend to 
try and like when you're for like for example when you're forcing yourself to do certain things do you try and like lean towards melody first and then harmony or or is there really not like a descript like or a, i don't know like an, a normal way you go about choosing melody or harmony or rhythm yeah i it's different every single time you know yeah. it's different unless i'm putting unless i'm putting the restriction on myself saying just going to deal with harmony or i'm just going to deal with melody or i'm just going to deal with rhythm or i'm just going to deal with this emotion if i'm doing that then yeah but there's no right or wrong way it's definitely no right or wrong way uh 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 you know uh i definitely find myself in i i've i've written place i've written songs where the melody came first and they were great and i've written songs where the harmony came first and they were also wonderful so um yeah just just getting it out once again is is the key um marvin oh you're on mute marvin yeah. all right say so marcus um when we first started out this uh class a lot of people were talking about getting ideas through improvising yes could you recommend a place where uh someone could go to help to learn to improvise yeah um well private lessons would definitely be a place uh if you're interested in that i definitely offer private lessons specifically on improvisation um so we can talk about that later i don't know if you i can send you my email address um but that would that i would suggest just uh you know the and and before i even say that you don't even need private lessons all you need to do is set time aside to improvise if you do that you will become a better improviser if you want if you now if you want somebody to help guide you and hold you accountable to that then yes you know reaching out to a teacher or reaching out to someone that's a great idea but in terms of just practicing improvisation, what I would suggest is just the same way that we did for composition, put a timer on for five minutes and just play. Just allow yourself to play and record it, record it. Allow yourself to play and just do that. And that's gonna take you, that's gonna, that's gonna really help, you know? And obviously like if you're trying to get more specific into certain types of improvisation, like if you're interested in jazz improvisation, then I would highly suggest going to some jam sessions and checking that out, you know, uh, uh, you know, it just really depends on where you want to go with it. But practicing improvisation, you can do that all, all, you know, all at, at the comforts of your own home, you know, I see. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. We got about three minutes left. Yes. Sir, I just wanted to um, say it's, it's so wonderful to hear these great comments from all of these these uh, aspiring composers. I know that several are probably your students or possibly Scott's too. And every comment has been right on the button. I mean, uh, and your, your clinic has been so comprehensive and inclusive. And um, it's interesting that the way you approached your, your uh, melodic and harmonic and baseline uh, thoughts at the beginning, are, those are the, exactly the same ways that we approach composition in every form. Uh, you, you talked about the A section, then go into a contrasting section in B, whether that goes to minor or goes to long, a longer melody tones versus uh, a more rhythmic A section. Um, I think you were in B flat or G minor, and then you went, you went to your uh, romantic melody, which I totally agree with it for the B section, the contrasting. And uh, these comments are just wonderful. You've got some wonderful musicians here that are, that are taking part in the session. And I'm I very... think you were, you're to be congratulated for being so communicative, communicative and inclusive in your approach and uh, very, very informative. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. These have been, this has been very exciting. Really great to work with you all in this, in this context. Um, one thing that I was thinking about that I didn't uh, share is uh, studying composition. One thing that really, 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 really helped me out a lot was studying counterpoint. Um, I don't use any of the rules. There's a lot of rules and stuff like that in counterpoint, but studying that uh, for a short period of time that I did really allowed me to have a good, strong understanding of, of tension and release in the melody. Um, and to me, that's what all, all of my melodies are based on is that this idea of tension and release. Um, 
just a, just something I wanted to share because uh, it, it's something that really helps me out. It's hard. It, it's hard though. The, the 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 I studied counterpoint when I was in college uh, with some of the professors, and and that was probably one of the most difficult things that that I had. There's all these rules you got to learn, and there's all these things, but. I'm happy. I, I am happy that I went through the process of doing it as 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 painful as it was and as restricting as it was. Uh, putting that restriction on me allowed me to, when I came to a place to create, to really be able to flourish. Um, I saw one more hand up. Darren, did did you have a question, Darren? Yeah, my question was, when is the harmonization clinic? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I, I, I may work something out for that. Uh, I really don't have too much, man. I'm, you know, I really don't have a lot to say, honestly, about harmony. Um, uh, uh, my, my approach to harmony is very, very, very basic. Um, and, uh, uh, and yeah, I guess maybe I can share that in a, in a masterclass sometime. Um, yeah, very good. Um, Go ahead, Scott. Were you gonna say something? I was I I just wanted to make sure no one that no one else had a question before um before we 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 thank Marcus for a great master class. Very nice. Very cool. Um and um this will be available on the website on the Michigan Jazz Festival website for about a week. Um so I I know that was a question from someone good I was just gonna you just beat me to the punch I said if anyone wants to get a hold of Marcus he just posted his email in the chat um, um, from tomorrow tomorrow or, or, or later today for for a week and you it, the webmaster will probably take will will take it off but uh, um, yeah it, this has been really really pleasurable informative and um, we really appreciate your your coming here today and sharing with us. Well, thank you for having me. I, I really uh, was excited to do this and share. And I think I'm going to do this again to the students that are on here. I, I, I may just set up my own situation and, and, and send out a link and we can continue this process if you guys are interested. Um, one thing that you all could do that would help me out tremendously uh, if you if you got something out of this masterclass and you really enjoyed it, if you could make a post on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, whatever sort of social media that you use, just just saying how uh, how much you enjoyed the masterclass um, and maybe something that you got from it, uh, that would be that would be a, a a real big benefit for me if you could do that. Um, uh, and us uh, so. too. <laughs> yeah, and for and for them as well, and make sure you mention the Michigan Jazz Festival for putting on the, the the uh, the the master class. So, um, yeah, uh, well, cool. I put my email in the uh, in the chat. Um, I I I am doing private lessons. I I um, will be starting. Um, I do them. I do them in uh, uh, thir uh, this well, this next this next uh, session here. I do them in thirteen week chunks. Um, so. This next session will be starting here in, in mid September. Uh, so if you are interested uh, in studying with me, um, I would highly suggest reaching out to me. We can jump on a on a Zoom call, see if it's a good fit for you. Um, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of space left, um, and I'm very selective with the people that I work with. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in it, shoot me a message, and we'll see if it's a good fit. And yeah, we'll take it from there. Um, once again, Scott and Dennis, thank you all so, 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 so much. Um, and to anybody that has harmony questions, talk to these guys. Those are these, these, these are the harmony masters here. Um, um, anything that I could say, they would, they, they would be able to expound upon 10 times fold. So um, yeah, reach out to them if you have any questions about harmony. Um, well, you, you're very, you're, you're very modest, but um this was this was this was a blast thank, thank you everyone for coming um and well we hope to see you at in a couple months at our next at our next one i'll be in touch i'll send you an email um and we'll see you soon okay guys have have a good day <laughs>